Every year, uh, the uh, SCCC is um, mandated by convention to send out a letter uh, by the 1st of November uh, with the updates to these charts that I will show you in just a second, uh, with the most current recommended um, uh, cost of living increase. Um, so, and in there, there's a link to get to this place. We felt that using these dynamic Excel spreadsheets are the best way to uh, drag ourselves into the 21st century, kicking and screaming, uh, to see how all of this stuff is calculated. So hopefully you'll notice our wonderful uh, diocesan website. As a matter of fact, Phyllis Jones is currently at this, uh, this uh, bike, bike race, which is why she's not here with us today. Uh, I want to walk you through how to find these charts. The, uh, they, are, they are always available for you, and when they're updated uh, come November 1st, they'll, they'll be in the exact same place, so they won't be hard to find. And of course, there's always this lovely search key right here that if you put in clergy compensation, it will come up. So if you're on the diocesan website, you go to For Congregation and Clergy. You scroll down to Resources, Documents, and Forms. Click on that. It says Resources for Clergy which is the uh, fourth option. You click on that one. And then you will see clergy compensation materials right at the top of this, this page, resources for clergy. I'm gonna do the uh, first one I'm gonna do is open up the full-time clergy compens 2014 reports and 15 projection. We're using these because we haven't updated yet for the 2016. So you click on that. So if your computer is smart, it will ask you what you want to do. Do you want to open it or do you want to save it? Save as. I'm going to dirty up Jonathan's computer. I'm sorry. So I'm going to put this just to the desktop so we know where it is. What I suggest you do is you give this a file name. We're going to call this as triple C demo. I would suggest you use your clerics first name, your church, your town, something that can identify it. Compensation report, however you want to do it, but put it on your computer and you're going to hit save. And at some point, hopefully, it'll show up. There it is, right here. You click on this. So what we're opening is the dynamic clergy compensation spreadsheet. Um, it hopefully look like this. It's got all kinds of important information. Number one, the second line says, upon completion, say, send report to SCCC at Diocese of New Jersey, NJ.org. Not many people do this. We really need you to do this. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Third line, enter in box, noted by highlighted red box, the credited service years from the church pension fund. That was my, the piece of paper that I held up before. So I will show you how this works. So in this box, yes, it, it will be emailed and it will also be mailed. And to the churches. It should be to the churches. Like, I mean, you, there's, the, the clergy compensation package is part of a larger document that Ann Naughty sends out every fall that includes the... So she's talking about the letter that you showed, so that you got... Oh, that, that letter goes to the clergy. Yes, exactly. yes, just to the clergy. Just so. to the clergy. It's got personal information that the church does not need to know about. Yeah. Just, 
And if, if, if somebody other than the cleric is filling this out, then, then ask them, what's your credited service years? And if they don't know it, have them call me <laughs> and I'll slap them. <laughs> um, okay, so if you will notice, there is um, a row A here under, under uh, cash stipend base. These are the minimums that we talked about in our presentation. And then the next one is saying the cash stipend base times credited service. So if we're gonna put in three years here, Notice that the numbers are automatically updated. They're automatically updated. If we change this to, say, eight years, enter, automatically updated. Notice that then the first line for the curate and assistant is zeroed out. That's because after eight years, you can no longer be considered newly ordained. If we do uh, 19 years, we'll see how that's changing. And then if we put in 21 years, it continues to update. But the reason why we said it only goes up to 20 years was both for, for kind of two things. If somebody with 20 years suddenly says, I've got 20 years experience, I feel that I want to use my gifts and talents to go to St. Swithin's in the swamp, but they can't afford me at, at $56,000 or whatever they're currently making. They're making more than that. And they say, no, I really want to go and I want to help that congregation, but they can only afford $30,000. That's that person's opportunity to do that. Um, it won't affect, necessarily, it won't affect their, their pension because the pension is, is based on the seven consecutive highest earning years. So if they think that they've reached the pinnacle of what their earning potential and have decided that uh, the next step is the next step, they can do that. Um, we wanted to be flexible enough to allow that opportunity to happen um, and to help people in their ministry. Um, what's important in this one is that you fill in this box because this is going to be used later in the other tab. So for we're just going to say for, um, for the demo, we're going to put in 10 years. There is a lot more information on this page, um, most of which we've already gone over. Um, for instance, if there's a combination of um, uh, housing, subsidy, uh, utilities, if it's more than a certain amount, then the um, CICA is calculated differently. Um, that usually only happens, the only time I've heard that happening in our diocese was because of the, the, the cost of the, uh, or the, the rental value of the, of the rectory. It was like a mansion, and it was ridiculous. Um, the rest of this chart is essentially just to give you an idea of the background, because I never want us to think that it's a black box. So. Um, B just lets you know what the housing equity or housing subsidy is. The C is the SICA calculation, pension fund, professional expenses, continuing education, the insurance premiums. And then this is what we were really trying to get at was for people or for congregations to have the ability to see very clearly what the total cost of having a clergy, full-time clergy person was going to be. So you can see from full from from newly ordained to um, full-time family living in their own house, the difference, it's almost twice the amount. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of difference when, when doing that. Um, the old chart or the old grid, essentially somebody would say, oh, we've got $50,000, we can have a priest. And it's like, well, you might be able to cover the cash stipend, but can you cover everything else that's required? So again, there's a whole bunch of definitions here. There's a whole bunch of definitions on the back as well to give you some information. Uh, most of which we've already covered or will be covering um, in the rest of uh, the presentations today. For those of you who aren't as familiar with Excel as geeks of us are, the most important thing you need to know about how Excel works is that there are tabs. So different pieces of paper have their own tab. So at the bottom here, if you see with the, um, where the cursor is, these are essentially different sheets. So the first one, Hopefully when you open it up, it goes to the first page, which is the full-time clergy comp chart. The next one is premium benefits. So you just have to click on it and it takes you to the next page. 
So we incorporated this information into this chart in order for people to be able to make these cost um, estimates. These numbers are provided to us by the, by the Benefits Committee. Most of the time when you receive those, um, those information, it gives you what the monthly premiums are. So what we essentially have done is um, uh, annualize that by making sure people would know what the annual cost is. So it gives you the monthly rates and then it gives you the annual rates. Um, then essentially all that what needs to be done is you have to choose what is um, how you're going to fill this out. So what would be most helpful to do two people, two adults, or a family, or, or a single person? This is your demo. Two, two adults. Okay, so for two adults, we're gonna we're gonna fill this out. So for life insurance cost uh, for 2014, because again you're doing the report for the previous year and um, uh, figuring out what you're going to do for the for the following year. Uh, Fifty thousand dollars benefit is um, to twenty eight. The cost for dental insurance for two parties is. And um, there are many, many different health plans to choose from. Pick the middle one. <laughs> okay. Like the Cigna Open Access? This one? This one? Okay, so that's 16,260. Uh, we're not that sophisticated yet. Okay, so then you have a total insurance cost, and then we do the same thing for 2015. This is the one we use, right? So you'll notice that the cost went up. So it's now 17880 Yes? I know, I get I get calls beginning I get calls immediately in September. Um uh most of those uh, are figured out in October. Um, that's why we have the drop dead date of making sure you get this information by November 1st. However, um, John left the room for the moment. I think the benefits committee is pretty pretty close on revealing, uh, revealing, uh, showing the numbers for what those are going to be for 2000. Um, so, okay. Um, we, we try to get the, the information as soon as possible. The, the reason, slight reason for the delay as far as SCCC is getting the information out is that we try to use the October numbers to find out, and usually that's around when Social Security will let us know when the COLA that they're going to use is. So we try, we use a lot of factors in trying to suggest what the COLA should be. Um, what Social Security is using, what the economy is doing, what the increase in, in insurance is going to be. So we try to we try to balance all of that, and it's it's it can be tricky, but we want it because we know that it's not going to be voted on until March of the following year or whenever the convention is. All right. So essentially, you're done with this page. You filled in the boxes here. You've got your numbers for what the total insurance cost is going to be. You go back down to the bottom of the page and you click on the next tab, which is the 2014 report. Oops, that's not where I wanted to be. Undo. I'm a terrible typist. In the swamp.
This used to be more important, but it's sometimes just helpful to have the information on hand of when this person was ordained. So. What time they were currently in, sometimes, uh, actually, let me change that because we're having 10 years, 10 years of ordination, so let's say that. 78. No, that's right. You know, that's fine. That's fine. Um, when they were ordained, they, it's 11. So years in, years in their current position, and this is one of the things that we were having a little bit of difficulty in, because the way that the old grid worked, people thought when they changed positions, they had to go back to zero, rather than how many years of, of um, uh, experience they had. So we want, it's nice to know how many times, they, how long they've been in that church, but it, it counts for as long as they've been ordained. So let's say they've been there four years. All right, you will notice in this box, um, it, the directions say, fill in the values in the column that best describes the clergy's position. The values will be automatically calculated in the corresponding row in the second chart. So this is the first chart, and then if you scroll a little farther down, or if you have a bigger screen, there's the second chart, okay? So is Father Swampy, in church-owned housing, or does he own his own home? Church housing. Okay. Is he? Well, he can't be. He can't be a, uh, a curate or assistant. Um, let's say. Okay. So we're going to say he's here. Um, so the reason why this box is left open is because if if the person is making more than the minimum, um, then it affects different. Um, a, a different uh, uh, calculation on the next sheet. Um, so, for instance, if, if the the required, if he was just receiving the required minimum, you would already know what that number is because you've been paying him for the for that year. Um, but if he's making more than that, this gives you the opportunity to include that in that calculation. So, is he making the minimum or is he making slightly more than a minimum? Minimum. Okay. So then I'm just going to quickly go back here and find out exactly what that number is. All right, so for 10 years, it says that he is making uh, 45,821. So he's in uh, rectory provided, so he's getting the housing equity. Fair rental value of the rectory. Again, this is for for uh, real estate purposes. So you're saying that the rectory is only furnished in the state of New Jersey. It can, it's going to rent for $1,000 a month. <laughs> I, would, I would say 20000 is probably more accurate for the state of New Jersey. So, well, I mean, and places, it will vary depending on where you are, but um, I think 20000 is probably a little bit more accurate. Now, for the total cost of utilities, this should be a true number. Get out, the, get out the bills. Start adding stuff up. And it will depend, again, on how the clergy has negotiated. Some clergy have negotiated that their internet is included in the rectory. Some clergy have negotiated that if they have garbage pickup, that's included. If there's, if there's a, a, a lawn service that comes, all of that counts. Um, at the bare minimum, it's got to be gas, electric, and u or utilities, uh, sewage, yada, yada. Um, so I, I have found that a, a good placeholder here is usually around 5,500, but again, this should be a true, how much? 10,000. You think 10,000? Wow. 10,000. So, well, let's split the difference and go with. 750. Face garbage show. All right, so again, this, this number is just a demo. You would know in your context what is correct. Again, that, that rectory that was like a mansion, so heat that sucker cost a pretty penny. 
So, um, so we put in 7,500. All right, so for professional expenses, again, you put in 4,500. Um, let's say Father, Father Swampy is, is pretty savvy and he decides to make this a round number rather than, the, way, the reason why it's uh, 1,700, oh, $1,117 is it's a calculation based on the curate's uh, uh, compensation. And, and that's explained in, in uh, the canon. Um, we already have the um, insurance premiums, and that's uh, already there. And uh, somebody was asking about the 403B. If there is an employer contribution to the 403B, that's included here because you want to know what the whole number is. If any bonuses are given, and this I'm not saying this is the Christmas thing that's given and cash under the table, but if it's something that's included in a paycheck, um, uh, then it needs to be included here. And Bob didn't hear me just say that. Um, so let's just say that for all intents and purposes, there's no other compensation. So what you will see is down at the bottom here, you've got all the numbers filled out, and then there's your number. Your number's uh, saying that is what it would cost to have your cleric for one year of uh, compensation. And that includes everything. What? You can't see it? It says uh, $91,468.60. Uh, That's including pension. The pension calculation was made for you, so that would be right here. And SEEK is made for you, which is right here. Two adults. Keep that in mind. Two adults. That shows you how much it costs. Uh, just a note. Somebody came up to me during the break, and I just want to make a note about this. Um, if your church is smart enough to have a payroll service, congratulations. Brava. Um, Make sure you are working with a person who understands clergy compensation. If you're using paychecks, there are people who are specialized in this. Um, they can withhold the tax money, and they are able to do that. So the, cler the clergy does not have to get that money paid to them specifically. Um, however, I am at a church that lives in the dark ages. I don't even get a stub, so I, I choose not to even let them mess with it. I understand what I'm doing. I'll take the money and save it myself. If some clergy have very little understanding or desire to understand their, their compensation and it would be easier for them to have somebody else taking care of it, fantastic. Paychecks can also make the withdrawals for a 403 b as well, which is great. Um, but it's um, the, the cleric, in some ways, really needs to step up for him or herself and know what they're doing, and if they don't know what they're doing and there's a payroll service, then let them take care of it. Does that cover it, Hank? Yes. That's right. So if, if, if on the W-4 form, they need to make, uh, clerics need to make sure that they're taking enough withholdings and not trying to get all these exemptions because uh, that's only, the $5,000 is only half of it. And if it's anything like my, my taxes, it ends up being quite a bit more than that. Um, I think I pay somewhere in the realm of 12000 somewhere around there. Um, so... Um, so it's just, it's an important, it's, it's, it's a big number, so you need to make sure that you've set the money aside. Um, Don's not in here, but I'm, I'm hoping, and I, if I'm speaking out of school, I'm sure I'll be uh, corrected, um, at the, uh, the um, profession, uh, what's the, what do they call it, the, the, clerk, the, the church, what's the day called in October? John, the day that's in October, the, the day, the parish, parish, parish leadership day, parish leadership day. 
It, um, I, are, are you guys covering how to fill out a W-2 form with the church, church treasures? At that? No. Okay. So, if your church treasurer does not know how to fill out the W-4 form, I'm going to put them on the spot and say, call Bob or Phyllis or a tax professional because that needs to be done properly. And if it's not done properly, it can really be a pain. Um, and there's some ins and outs that have to happen. So if your treasurer doesn't know how to do it, it's best to ask for help. Please ask for help. Once you understand how to do it, you'll understand how to do it, but it's, it, it, it'll be a huge benefit for the cleric if you do that. Yes? Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So, for instance, and this is one of those things. So that parsonage allowance that you have, you've, the vestry has passed. Say, uh, the total compensation, including housing, for somebody living in a rectory, is like what what uh, Cecilia suggested is sixty six thousand dollars. They've said that they can prove that they're spending twenty four thousand uh, dollars on their housing. Um, so you take sixty six minus twenty four. Um, and again, I can't do math in the air either. <laughs> 42. So your W-2 can say you earned $42,000. Um, right. So, but it's, it just gets confusing because people not in the know are like, well, that's not how much you made. It's like, well, according to the, the, the IRS, I did. So I'm sure Bob will talk more about that. Okay, so you then click on the next the final tab, which is the 25 compensation, 20, uh, the 2015 compensation calculation. So this is the one in which you're planning for the following year. Sorry, I didn't mean to go in front of it. Um, so when these are updated in uh, late October and early November, this will take 2016. Um, you will notice that all the information that you filled out uh, from the previous uh, uh, tab is filled in for you automatically. You don't have to do anything there. All of the information that you have filled out that is irrelevant has also been brought over. So they brought over the uh, 2014 clerical compensation stipend. Um, what this does is um, for years of credited service, it says what the minimum is. So this minimum um, is it just not rounded up. This is where the COLA increase is put in. So when um, the SCCC makes our recommendation, this number may or may, or may not get changed. So for 2015, our recommendation was 1.6%. Uh, so that is included right here. Once again, we need to put in our housing subsidy, or I'm sorry, the equity, because they're living in a uh, rectory. Fair rental value of the rectory, um, cost of utilities, and again, you can use the previous year's uh, estimate in order to do that. Professional expenses, continuing education. You'll see that the updated annual insurance premiums are there, and other con uh, compensation if it's necessary. And just like the previous one, it's all filled out for you in the bottom chart. Um, notice some of the other fields are, have numbers in them, but you can just ignore that. You just need the one that, that you are most interested in. So what these first two uh, um, boxes do is they kind of give you what um, the difference uh, between um, if the increase was just for the um, COLA increase or the increase based on um, uh, essentially the merit increase. So essentially it's like it would it adds a year of credited service. I think it still adds a year of credited service. Should. So in this case it looks like the COLA increase actually gives the person, gives the cleric the better deal. So because uh, they, um, so what then happens is that the um, the way that the chart is set up is to take the higher of the two compensations. So, um, 
So then they get the um, housing, or all the all the other ones are combined. The the SICA is updated. The pension is updated, and you can double check these numbers with um, with uh, the pension fund because they will send they send you a bill periodically. You can call one of the specialists on the phone and say these are the numbers. What are you coming up with um, to see if it's accurate? Um, I, most of the times I've heard people say it's very accurate. So, and then there's the, there's the, um, and a lot of the increase you see from the previous year was the cost of the insurance premiums. So the final number is uh, $94,279.71. So the the two no um, so the 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 two um, increases that we try to balance here is one is the merit increase essentially for a year of credited service, um, the other one is the is the uh, cola. What was happening in the past is people were getting both increases, so we were trying to mitigate that and saying, if depending on what you're currently making, are is the better deal for you getting the merit increase or getting the cola increase? So for some, for instance, somebody who is already making more than the minimum, getting the cola increase automatically makes sense because the merit increase wouldn't wouldn't matter. Um, for somebody who's only making the minimum, sometimes it depends. Sometimes having the merit increase is better. Sometimes having the cola increase is better. There, there are some, like our, our diocesan offices actually do this, that um, because, of, because it's only recommended and it's not an act of convention until it gets voted on, they, get, they, they essentially get back paid. So until it's gone into effect, most, most congregations don't do it that way. Um, they, just, they just take it and, I mean, if it's reasonable, like we try to be reasonable, 1.6% was the same thing that Social Security did last year. Um, we just, we, they just say, yeah, that's fine. Um, there were times in the past where it was like 4.8%, so that was more of a, of a question, but um, um, that's why we say it's recommended rather than what it's, what it's mandated, because we can't, until it's an action of convention, we can't say that it's mandated. I'm not I sure. I will freely admit that, that these charts are not perfect. If you find a bug or a calculation that is not correct, please let us know. We need to make sure that these are accurate as possible because there's a lot of things in the balance here. So real quickly, because we are running extremely late, I wanted to show you the part-time um, uh, chart, and it's very similar to what we just did. That's where I want to go. All right, so the part-time report we want to save as. So you will notice it looks fairly similar to the other one. We make a point about making sure that the two lines that are different are one is for active clergy and one is for retired clergy. Um, and essentially the big difference was that is that with retired clergy you don't have to pay pension. Um, same thing goes with, um, 
excuse me, the accredited service years. The way the work units, essentially we took the number of the minimum and uh, divided it by 12. We just took, I mean, that it was, the, it was a pretty simple way that we chose to do that. We just took that number, divided it by 12. So we'll say that uh, we're having active clergy, somebody's been at it for uh, 15 years and they, uh, for whatever reason, they're ready to do part-time. Um, so that means that per working unit, you are paying them 4,000, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Well, we'll explain a little bit more. So that's um, $4,215. And again, all of the same uh, with a little bit of explanation about working units and all that kind of stuff so, uh, there. All right, so then we go to the, to the benefits. Now, benefits, this is, this is one of those places that it is negotiated. So if, um, if you are providing any kind of health care, um, uh, retired clergy, if there's some kind of medical care offset, um, Medicaid offset, that would have to be included. I, um, again, um, I'm, I'm sure Bob will talk a little bit more about that because I don't want to offer you anything that gets you into trouble. Um, this, of course, is a, is a huge chunk of the compensation. So are, is this person going to get benefits? Let's say it's a single person. So we'll do, we'll do the cost and for, for um, Time's sake, we'll just we'll do it uh, just for 2015. If if you are if you are hiring a part-time clergy person who is retired, that to be your priest, then then you d essentially the only difference is is uh, you don't have to pay um, into the pension fund. Um, but if there's housing, there's, there's ramifications for that. Um, and if you're paying any kind of insurance coverage, if, if, whether or not they're using Medicare or something like that. Just as a point, and I know that this has happened in the past, um, some clergy continue to work who are not retired but are on Medicare. Um, uh, that's a very great benefit to the congregation, but it's also a, it's, it's, it hides the uh, accurate cost of what, what to cover a regular person would be. Um, it's significantly less money. Um, and I know that it's affected some congregations where they went from paying $8,000 or less, $6,000, and all of a sudden they got somebody else in and it, that went up to sixteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000. And it was a bit of a shock. So uh, we'll do the same thing here. Oops, wrong number. So this is a single person, life insurance, dental insurance, and then they're on the HMO, uh, health insurance. Um, so this is one of the big difference here. So we go back to the, the first line, the first number here, and it says that the minimum is 4,215. Oh, that's already that, right? Never mind. All right, so then this is the next critical one where it says the number of working units. So this person is going to be at three quarters time and they're working nine units. Um, the housing offset course, the cost. So again, this is negotiated. If the person has their own home, or if they have, the, um, if if they're living in, in housing provided by the church, um, that number needs to be put in here. If if they're living in the in the um, in the rectory, then it needs to be then that number needs to be included here, like the fair rental value of the rectory, if applicable, the num the amount of the utilities, if applicable. Um, so if this person is living on their in their own house, um, but the church has said, well, we'll give you we'll give you five thousand dollars. Um, as, a, as, a, as an offset, essentially, um, for the cost of your housing.
if okay, let me. Um, I, I switched gears on you. So let's let's. Let, so the housing offset is essentially if they're living in their own home. So if they're if they're living in church provided housing, then you have to do the same thing we did before, which was the twenty thousand here, and the um, forty five hundred here. Right, right. So this is where it, this becomes a little bit more. You have to pick and choose and know exactly what your circumstances are. So if there's, it's. Um, I'm sorry. I'm in the. I'm in the wrong spot. I'm under retired clergy. I meant to be in the. I meant to be in the active clergy. I'm sorry. I know. I, I want to be in the in the in the active clergy rather than the. So under the active clergy, we're here. So, so if, if the person is is still in church provided housing, then you still have to use this. The that can't be prorated. The amount of the, the if they're living full time in the rectory, then it has to be the same numbers that you used for the other person. Um, I'm not sure why the insurance isn't coming over. The insurance should be there. So, oh, actually, that's a good point. So. Okay, so if 100% then they would get the 9,000, if the church says, well, we can't pay the 9,000, but we can offset that by, say, 5,000, then you could put that in here. Thank you, I forgot about that. That's perfectly legitimate. I mean, again, that money would be paid directly to the, to the health care provider, and then the, the, the cleric would be responsible for the rest of it. So... So again, there's a there's a specific calculation for um, I guess that's a, it's a tax question, I would say. I don't know, I'd have, you'd have to ask. Um, all right, something is not working on this, and I'm not sure why. It's not, it's not the calculation of the, the working units isn't following through, so I will double check on that. Um, but anyway, so essentially it's the same thing. It will multiply by the working units, um, and uh, the SICA, the pension fund, because it, it, and this is the pension fund number that you need to use because they're in in the, in the housing, um, so that's the total compensation. But that that number isn't. I don't think that's accurate. All right, <laughs> I can't show you in the pretty form, but please, please, please remember that when you're done with your compensation uh, chart, save it and send it. Save it and send it. Remember, we believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus saves. And he sends us out into the world. So we want you to save your chart and send this out to the SCCC at dioceseofnj.org. And the reason why we do this is part of the job that we are mandated by convention to do is to make sure that you are doing your job and accurately and uh, efficient, uh, accurately and compensating your, your clergy. And if not, then we can help you figure that out. Um, what we have said for several years now is what we are interested in is making sure that everybody is, is actively participating in ministry. These are the minimums, the, the, the basis of what we want to do. And if something needs to be negotiated one way or the other, as long as it's not, you're not trying to balance your budget on the back of the clergy person, or and there's a package that the church can put together that the cleric is willing to take. So clergy, you have to stand up for yourselves. If you're willing to take it, then great. 
Um, but if, I mean, everybody's got to got to be in this together. And, and most clergy I know, what we're not in it for the money. We want to do the job. We want to do the work. Um, but we also need to make a living. And if we're dying and not being able to feed ourselves, that's not healthy for anybody. Thank you all very much for your attention. And uh, we will send this off to the next group of people. <laughs>